if your potatoes are dying, please ferment them to preserve them. Preserve them of their death. Hello, I'm Brad Carter back at Gosney HQ cooking with the amazing dome. Today I'm going to be cooking a fermented potato flatbread with wild garlic uh, salsa verde and some of my favourite cheese, Ogle Shield. So, my version of cheesy garlic bread. So, first things first, the potatoes, we need to crack on with them. Uh, we're going to ferment them. So, that's putting them through a process of them creating their own lactic acid. So, they're going to ferment with salt, scrub the potato skins so they're clean put them into a nice big pan of water, so they're boiling away in uh, water. Once they're cooked, peel the skin off when they're cool enough to handle. We need to crush them up and add the salt, then we can ferment them. Fermenting, we need to hold them at around about 30 degrees, you can go up to like 32, 33. Hold them for about 10 days, then check them. What we're looking for is super salty, sour, not much liquid, really dry, and that means they've fermented under control uh, in a really good environment. These potatoes have been fermented for two weeks and they will act in this bread as the raising agent. For the process of fermenting the potatoes, head to the Gosney website. So next stage is to make the actual dough. Pretty simple, four ingredients. I'm gonna use a KitchenAid because it's really a consistent way of doing it. So we've got the potatoes, they've been fermented. We've got some strong flour, bread flour or double zero and then some yogurt. Like I said, the uh, two things are live active ingredients. So they're gonna help to give the bread its like spring and push. The last bit of the salt remaining from the recipe at the start, we add three quarters of the salt to the potatoes and then uh, the rest of the salt goes in the bread dough at the end. Uh, you need, the salt on the top will always mix in real well. So potatoes, flour, then yogurt. That's been about two or three minutes now. Uh, the bread dough's come together. Quite a thick dough rather than something highly hydrated with loads of liquid. It's more sort of like a fast brewed bread though. Uh, you can actually leave the skins on, but in, I really prefer to take them off because you get all these little pieces of potatoes running through the dough and that's the dough. And then that gets proved overnight in the fridge. So just like in a lightly oiled container, just like any other dough. Uh, and then that should double in size and then you'll be able to uh, roll it out for your uh, breads for the dough. One of the components for this flatbread is a cheese fondue sauce. Uh, I'm going to make it with Ogle Shield, the British version of raclette. It's a really low melting point. Put the cream into the uh, pan. Ogle Shield cheese, corn flour. Corn flour helps stick it all together, thickens it, stabilizes it, and allows it to become saucy saucy. Cook it out for a few minutes, like this. So, the best thing you want to do for this to stop it skinning, put it into another container, bowl, tub, whatever you like, and then get some uh, cling film on top. So we've got some cling film on top of the cheese sauce now, I'm just gonna leave that room temperature. We don't want it to go fridge cold, so we're not gonna put it in the fridge, we don't want it set. Uh, we want it still pourable or saucy. So leaving it out room temp is fine until the rest of the recipe's done, and then we're gonna move on to the wild garlic. Next step for the recipe, we're gonna make uh, my version of salsa verde, but with wild garlic. Fresh wild garlic leaves, which are these beautiful things, uh, also known as ramsons. They're normally in season from, if you're very lucky, January, but normally the end of February, March until uh, summertime. Um, we use the whole plant leaves, flowers. After the flower goes to seed, you get these amazing capers. There's a couple of ways you can do this. Blend it, you can do it by hand, pestle and mortar, however you feel comfortable. Get a bowl. We're gonna use all the oil, so I'm gonna start off with that. I'm just gonna put a knife to the anchovies just so they blend a little bit better. Some of the capers. There is companies online, you can buy them, uh, but they've already done all the uh, preservation. Uh, so we're gonna add some of the parsley and then some of the beautiful wild garlic. Normally grows near bluebells, so if you can find it, pick it. Lastly, wild garlic vinegar. And then we're just gonna give it a blend. So this is the dough, it's been in overnight and obviously it's done its thing in the fridge overnight by rising up, you can see there's a little bit of spring back. So now we're going to separate it into little balls, so little weight balls, 160s. So recipe's given us five with a little bit of spare, you could spread that out if you wanted to. Turn it into the flour and we're just going to give it a little roll. 
it's not a pizza though, it's not Neapolitan style or anything like that. It's just trying to get that lovely little dinky cooking shape so we can really uh, cook it evenly in the dome. And then I just like to use my scraper just to give it a nice uniform circle. I'm trying to keep it like, you know, centimetre and a half depth. So my all time favourite potato dish is a potato smiley face. We've got all the fermented potato breads shaped, uh, all ready to go. Uh, looking real uniform, real nice. We're so gonna take a, a Gosney peel, and then we're gonna go and pop them in the oven. 350 to 400, nothing too crazy. Uh, wanna cook them nice and slow, a little bit to the flame. Um, if you're using the wood and the same with the gas and then a little bit further away just to finish them up. Keep turning them all the time as well. When they look like this, they're about perf. So the next stage is to add a little bit of cheese, cheese it all up. We're going to use a little bit more of the ogle shield, which is what we put into the sauce, just to boost that ogle shieldy taste. Like I said, it's got a low melting point, so it's perfect for melting in the oven really quickly. The bread's cooked. We're just looking to just melt that cheese, give it a little bit of extra flavour. Potato flatbreads are cooked. Cheesed up, out the oven, ready to go. Last thing to do is uh, add some wild garlic salsa bird. That's the green sauce we made earlier. This is pretty punchy, so as much as you think you can handle. This one here has got a smiley face. And then we're gonna put some of this amazing cheesy fondue sauce on the side to dip in. I mean, this is fancy cheesy garlic bread, but pretty good cheesy garlic bread. One thing left to do is to eat it, and I've been waiting to do this ever since they came out of the oven. Manageable dunking pieces. Get into the cheese. A bit of garlic going in the cheese. Show me. <laughs> right. The beauty about having a ramekin of cheese, you can just keep going back for more, look. Got eyeball on that up. Why don't you have a little fat piece here, look. Mm -hmm. Great acting. What? It's lovely. Mm. For the full recipe, go to gosney.com. <laughs> Do it again, one too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> one more time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Had a big log fall off there. Oh. For the full recipe, go to dozen. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't he? Doesn't he? Everyone. Does everyone do, do that? <laughs>